Okay, let's bring it back up here. Let's focus in up here on the board. So first thing we know we need to do is get one fraction over one fraction. Now clearly we have one fraction on the denominator. That's great. That's what we want. On the numerator though, we have two fractions. We've got y over 5. And we actually consider this to be 2 over 1. In which case we know we need a common denominator. What is our common denominator here? Yeah. So we'll multiply 5 over 5. We've got y over 5 minus 10 over 5. The 3 tenths, we're just going to kind of drag that along. We're not doing anything with it right now. We're done with it. Nothing we can do. Now, the y over 5 minus 10 over 5, be real careful on that. We do have a common denominator, but when you combine that to get one fraction, our denominator is 5, but on the numerator, those are not like terms. You're just going to have y minus 10. That's all you can do. You can't combine it and get anything else besides that. Raise your hand if you've got y minus 10 over 5. Good. That's fantastic. Really good job. All over 3 tenths. Now, we do have one fraction over one fraction at this point. This is one fraction. It's all combined. This is one fraction. We're now going to set this up as a division problem. Just make sure you write it appropriately. I, I know before, I kind of had these different. I had the two fractions on the denominator to start. And so we wrote that when we did it. We wrote that first. But now, when, when we're looking at this, this is the first fraction. This is the, the main numerator. It comes first in your division problem. It doesn't come second. So we have y minus 10 over 5. And we're going to have that divided by 3 tenths. So we're going to write this out exactly what this means. This means this fraction divided by this fraction, that's what we have. Next up, we know division really is multiplication by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So we have y minus 10 over 5. And we're going to multiply it by 10 <coughs> over 3. By a show of hands, how many people made it that far? That's great. That's fantastic. Now, something kind of cool happens in this particular problem. I want you to look for it. When you do the multiplication, On the denominator, I'm, I'm thinking that you probably got 5 times 3. Did you get that? Yes. Because you, you, most of you probably extended your line. And you did that. One thing you must have, absolutely must have, what, do you must, what must you have? Specifically, I'm talking about this part. What is it? Parentheses. you got to have parentheses. Did you have parentheses? Did you? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you just do this, if you do that right there, that means y minus 100. That is not what you want. What this means is y minus 10 times 10. That's what actually we have, y minus 10 times 10. Do you see where that's coming from? Now, this part is kind of cool. When you simplify things, you're simplifying items that are being multiplied together over items that are multiplied together. You can't ever subtract something that's being subtracted, or sorry, simplify something that's being subtracted or added. So in our case right here, we could not simplify this 10 with this 5. Do you see why? Yeah. This one's connected by that subtraction. But what's awesome about this problem is that when we have those parentheses, it means that this, watch carefully please, this is something new you're learning right now. This is being multiplied by that number. Do you agree? Yeah. This entire expression is being multiplied by that 10. And this 5 is being multiplied by that 3. 
What that means is that where I cannot cancel anything in here, I can't simplify anything in that expression, I could simplify the 10 with the 5. That is possible. Because this is being multiplied, and that's being multiplied. Do you guys see it? Mm -hmm. That's okay. That you can do. That's why we need those parentheses to show that. To show it's an entire expression being multiplied. If you don't have the parentheses, you cannot do this. If you do have the parentheses, no problem. You can do that. So here we'll simplify the 5 with the 10. What number goes into both? 5. 5 5 one time into 10 two. two times. Are you with me, guys? Yeah. With me. Okay. So because those are being multiplied by this entire thing, and 5 is being multiplied by 3, that's allowing me to simplify. So I'm going to get y minus 10 times 2 over 3. Still so far so good? Yes. Now, one more thing we commonly do. Commonly, it's actually uncommon. To see something with parentheses times 2, we will typically put this 2 in front of the parentheses. So instead of y minus 10 times 2, you'll almost exclusively see it 2 and then parentheses y minus 10. That's how you'll see things in, in every math class you see. Does it mean the same thing when I do that? Yes. yes. Okay, multiplication is commutative. It means I can switch around, no problem. No, we have a question. That was it? Last thing we're going to talk about today, we're going to start some order of operations. What was order of operations that we've been doing so far? Then what? Then what? Exponents. Oh, we are not of one accord right now. We are all query, not even. So what's the first one? Good, then? Exponents. Then? Those go together. And then? Addition and subtraction. Good, and those go, I don't have six fingers, fortunately. But uh, those things go together as well. So. Parentheses first, for sure. Exponents second, for sure. Multiplication and division as they occur from left to right, then addition and subtraction as they occur from left to right. Let's try one of these with some fractions, see how it goes, and we'll start on this next time. So 2 thirds cubed minus 2. 2 thirds cubed minus 2. The first thing we check for in any order of operations problem, whether they're fractions or not, is for parentheses and then exponents. Now, we do have some parentheses, but inside the parentheses, there's really no operation to do. It's just saying you have this entire fraction raised to the third power. You follow me on that? Yes. yes. If there was operations, we'd do that first. We have some exponents, though. Now, the question I have for you, we've talked about fractions that have exponents. Is that exponent applied to just the two? Just the three or both of them? Yeah, so the first thing we do, we leave this minus two alone. We're going to take two to the third power and three to the third power. That's what that says to do. It says both the numerator and denominator get raised to the third power. Okay, now don't shout it out right away, but I want you to think of what two to the third is. Don't say it, don't say it out loud, just think about it. How much is two to the third? Six or eight? Eight. eight. Good, because two to the third means two times two times two. That's eight. Now, 3 to the third, I want you to think about that one. Don't say it out loud yet. 3 to the third, is it 9 or 27? 27. Good, that means 3 times 3 times 3, so 27 minus 2. So now we've, we've got this down to 8 27ths minus 2. But 2 over 1. Good, 2 over 1, because now we don't have any multiplication or division, but we do have some addition or subtraction. This is 28 over 7 minus 2. Of course, yeah, we make that 2 over 1. Do we have an LCD? That means we need to multiply this fraction by 27 over 27. We'll get 8 27 minus, hey, what's that fraction become? 27 times 2, how much is that? 54. After we do this step, we're, we're back down to subtracting fractions, which we've done in this class already. We've done everything here already. Did we, are we okay? Can we subtract those now? Yeah. Yes. So we're going to have 8 minus 54 over 27 
We'll go ahead and do 8 minus, 20, uh, 8 minus 54. We can change it to plus a negative, combine them with the addition rule. That's going to be... Negative 46. Say that again? 46. Negative 46. Over 27. You would try to simplify it. You can't simplify that one. Yeah. Reggie, I feel okay with the, at least the exponent and the subtraction. Good. We'll try a couple more of those next time and keep on rolling. So we're continuing talking about these order operations, and we know that order operations means our PEMDAS, our parentheses, exponents, multiplication from left to right, then addition, uh, addition, subtraction from left to right, or division, multiplication. So when we're doing this, we know that the parentheses, that, that really is just holding the fraction there for us, but the exponents, that is important. So the first thing we do here is, of course, do our exponents. What I'd like you to do on your problem right now is eliminate the exponent for me. Go ahead and simplify that. When you're dealing with the exponent, does it go to the 4, the 5, or both the 4 and the 5? Both. both. Okay. Now, how about the 4 squared? Is 4 squared 8 or 16? Which one? 16. Good. And 5 squared is? So we know we're going to get 16 over 25. Is there anything else I can do with this problem? Let's do that. I want you to change this into a fraction, and then I want you to subtract them. So go for that now. So you should be finding, making that into a fraction. Find your LCD, and then combine those fractions. Hey, how do you change a whole number like 1 into a fraction? What do you do? What was that? Okay. So instead of just 1, I'm going to change this to, well, just 1 over 1. Once you change that to 1 over 1, what's the next thing you must absolutely do in order to subtract these fractions? Good. Now, it's kind of nice when you have a 1, right? Because if you have a 1 as your denominator, the LCD is just the other denominator. So in our case, the LCD is 25. We don't necessarily have to multiply this one, but we do have to multiply this by 25 over 25. And we'll get 16 over 25 minus 25 over 25. Did you make it that far? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Also, if you, if you really want to think about this, how much is 25 over 25? One. one. That's one. So this is the same exact expression that we've been having the whole time, which is writing a little differently. Now that we got that common denominator, of course you're going to make this one fraction. You'll have 16 minus 25 over 25. How much is 16 minus 25? That's it, as far as we can go. So we know that this expression is equal to negative 9 over 25. How many people feel okay with this exponent of this stuff? Let's move on. So we're moving on here. We got some exponents. We know how to deal with those now. Hey, would you be able to do that problem? Yes. What's the first thing you do on that problem? Before the LCD. Before the LCD even. Yeah, let's move that. We move the negative. Now, if you can do that problem, so keep watching the board, I'm going to add to this. 